Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Darts Around the Globe, a series where we meet a new darts player from a new country every episode. Today we are joined by a member of the national team of the Isle of Man, a Challenge Tour semi-finalist and a great online darts player. He got into the semi-finals of the WDF Virtual World Cup. My guest of today is Kevin Lane. Hi, my name is Kevin Lane, representing the Isle of Man. And this is Darts Around the Globe. Today we have a new guest. He is uh, from the Isle of Man. It's uh, Kevin Lane. Um, Kevin, how are you doing uh, today? Hi, I'm very good. Um, but I was a bit frustrated with um, with Challenge Tour uh, going back a fortnight ago. But apart from that, my, my darts are going quite quite well. Um, yeah, but I'm good. Good and all. Are you uh, healthy? Yes, I'm very good. Very good. Um, I'm at the ice late when I got back from Challenge to us, so it was my first day back at work today. So that was okay. a bit hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can uh, understand. Let Let's talk about, um, yeah, well, your career. Um, how did you start playing uh, darts? Um, darts has been in the family really uh, for a long, long time. My dad used to play. My brother used to play county, uh, youth county, um, but. I didn't really, I didn't really take it up, to be honest. With you. Um, I didn't take it up until I was about twenty-five. Um, <laughs> I was uh, very tight for money, put it that way, uh, mm-hmm. at the time. And I got given a set of darts by an old guy who's passed away now, poor John Bynan. Um, he gave me a set of darts, and then another guy gave me a dartboard, and I put it up in the, in, in my house. And never look back. Um, they were short. They were short in the local league one night. My dad was like, "Go on, go and play." I said, "I can't count. My counting is awful. It's got better over the years, but mm-hmm. um, I didn't really want to play because I was conscious about my counting." But and yeah, the rest is history. Within the first six months, I took out a one five six. So I was like, "I could play this game," <laughs> and the rest is history. Wow, that's a that, that's a good story. Um. Yeah, you're from the Isle of Man. It's also in this podcast series. Um, we had the island, the, the Fiji Islands, but I think the Isle of Man is even uh, a smaller and a, a smaller population. And can you tell a little bit more about the island and why it's a different uh, like country in in darts? Um, it's, it's the Isle of Man is absolutely a beautiful place. Uh, very little crime. Um, absolutely fabulous place. Uh, darts wise. Um, it's it's not enough darts on the Isle of Man. Obviously, I'm from Wales originally. Um, I've mm-hmm. been living in the Isle of Man over the last five years. Um, but there's just not enough darts and competition on the Isle of Man. Don't give me we do the rankings and things like that, but you can get a bit stale, if that makes sense, because you're playing the same players over and over again. So that's why I try and do like sort of Q school and challenge tours, things like that, just to keep me keep me quite sharp, if that makes sense. Tell us a bit a bit more about um, the competitions going on in the Isle of Man. Is there um, are there uh, different leagues and how many teams do I have to think of uh, stuff like that? Um, right, we've got we've got the ranking system which qualifies well. It used to be um, the Windmill Masters and a qualifier for the World Champ- BDO World Championships. But obviously, that's, that's I don't know that's up in the air at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got like the nationals, uh, which is once a year. Um, we have one or two comps through the year, uh, Billy Mcton and a couple of others. Um, league-wise, uh, there's this north, south, east, and west of the island. Um, I play, I play in the west on a Monday. I was playing in the West on a Monday. I only only play in Laxey on a Monday now. I've just started this season, um, and then I play in in the North on a Tuesday night. Um, standards, quite yeah. Standards can be good. Um, you sometimes you got you got to be on your game. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can't. Sometimes you can't switch off, and other other times then you, it's, it's it's a bit easier type of thing. Yeah. So so there are different four different parts of. Um, the island playing yeah. uh, in darts. Um, are they also competing uh, against each other at the end of the season or, or something like that? 
No, they don't. Um, some uh, I was attending the AGMs. I mentioned like trying to put a Super League type of thing together. Yeah. Nothing really come of it. Um, the youth starts over years. Nothing really really happening with youth. Um, the really the island's just not big enough. It's just really not big enough, which is a shame really because. <laughs> I've been speaking to a, a mate of mine, Mike Chalski, and I was like, I'd love to just do a JDC type of thing over here, but yeah. it's just having time and the effort, if that makes sense. Do, do you feel like um, the amount of people in, on the aisle um, playing darts, which is, is not much apparently, um, do you feel like it's um, a problem for your development in becoming a better darts player? Oh yeah, without the shadow of a doubt. Um, don't get me wrong, some quality players on the island, man. Um, but you're limited of how many times you play. You, you play them, and you are playing the same faces, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you get a bit stale. Um, you you can take your foot off the gas, and it's like that's why I like to go across and try and play as much as I can, just to try and keep me sharp. Yeah, one of those tournaments uh, at the start of this year was uh, Q School. Yeah. Um, the best result was on day three. You got into the last 64. Um, uh, I saw you lost games from uh, Jeff Smith and uh, Peter Jakes. Um, how was your experience over there at uh, Q School? Uh, I've been there now five five years, I think, Q School. Maybe uh, something like that. Maybe six. Um, <sighs> game against Peter Jakes, I was so frustrated with myself. I think I must have been on a double three or four times before him. I, I, I thought to myself I really outscored him um, and I just couldn't finish, just couldn't buy a double. And I was like, I was so frustrated when I came away from that game. It's so hard, the school, the Q school is so tough. Um, mm -hmm. You've got so, you've got to be on your game constantly. You can't, you've, that's what I lack is that little bit of consistency. It, it's, my game's only when you play the top players or the better players like that. Your game will only go in, the, in one direction, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, do you notice that um, development? Because you've you've already said you played at Q School for five years or or something like that uh, in a row. Um, do you feel like you're a better player now than five years ago? I I'd like to say yes. When I first went, I'd only been playing darts a few years. And I was like, I was in two minds whether to go or not because I didn't know, really know how, how good I was, if that makes sense. Um, but my, my first year, I was like, I wasn't getting hammered, if that makes sense. And I was missing doubles for chances. So I thought to myself, I'm not far away. I'm really not far away. And I plugged on, tried on doing, attending them. Um, and I, think, I do think my game is going in the right direction. After the Q school, you then the the challenge tour um it's also a tournament which you, what you um a attend more often uh, over the years are q school and the challenge tour a little bit similar to each other or is it a different environment uh, over there no it's um i'd say it's, it's different um i think you get um players go into q go into q school like I was at my first year, not realizing, not knowing what to expect, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then they drop off and they don't want to go to the challenge to up because they, they think they, they're not quite there type of thing. Um, so, but yeah, I do feel, yes, it's, it's, it, is, it is a difference. You get more of the serious starters then going to the challenge to us, trying to, trying to establish themselves, I suppose. Yeah, you you made uh, you made fifty pounds at the that challenge tour weekend. And how did the last weekend on the challenge tour uh, go? And do you know what? It's so frustrating because I've played games, and I've played well and lost. And this this um, two or three weeks ago, I wasn't playing very well, and I got the semi final on on the Friday afternoon, mm -hmm. and I was like, but I'm not playing very well. It just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. It's so frustrating as a player when you know you're capable of playing quality darts. It's so much pressure when you get there. Everybody's fighting for the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so even if you um, when you got in the semi final of the challenge tour, your best result on the challenge tour, it still didn't feel right. 
no, my you no, know, my game wasn't there. Didn't I was, I hit I hit a lot of shots at the right time. If that makes sense, good shots. Mm-hmm. I put them under pressure, but as a consistency wise, I really wasn't happy with my game that weekend. And you and you can see that by the averages. I was so disappointed, but I come away with seven hundred pound. I thought myself. I got the semis on the Friday afternoon. I thought to myself, let's have a good day Saturday, and let's have a good day Sunday, and let's see what see what brings. But it's it's, it's so tough. Like I think I picked a couple of quid up on the Saturday or Sunday or whatever it was, but not enough. I think I was I think I was sitting twenty fifth. I think on the going into the Saturday, I thought a couple of good a couple of good. Tournaments, and I could be even the shout even just to get in the top ten to to get Q school paid for next year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's yeah, it's it's so hard, it's so frustrating. But I know my A game's there, but it's just producing it, and everybody's doing everybody's exactly the same. I think. Yeah, so so is this still a sign that um, well, you you got in the semi-finals this year? So is it is it a sign that next year you will Q, attend Q school again and then the challenge tour and then? Just see where it goes. That's the plan. That is the plan. Um, and I, to be fair, hopefully I can win a couple next year, maybe. But as I said, it's all in a day. Um, my, I'm not that. I'm not. My consistency's not quite there yet. Um, but I'm playing a lot of friendlies online uh, with one or two pros. Do you know what I mean? But it's 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 going in the right direction. I, I hope anyway. That, that's good. That's good. Um, before we're going to going to talk about the the online darts, which uh, you are definitely going uh, going good at. Um, one thing I noticed is that you uh, represent Wales on the the PDC tour. Um, well, you were born in in Wales. You 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 originated from Wales. Um, yep. Is that the reason why, or isn't it possible to represent the Isle of Man on the PDC circuit? <laughs> Um, I could, um, I could represent the other man on the PDC circuit, but <laughs> I am proud from where where I come from. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I absolutely love the other man. Um, but so I've my my the Dart database says in Wales, and I always put down Wales because that's where I am actually from. Um, but I I was saying to my wife that I think I will start going down as representing the other man more. Now I've been here for up to five years, so I think it's about time I start representing the Alaman yeah, on a more regular basis. If that makes sense, you can't swap and choose and pick. You've got to pick one of you. So I think as a, as it's my home address, it's my home. I love the place, so I think I'll start representing the Alaman a lot more mm-hmm. rather you, than going down the Wales route. Yeah, and, you, and you're part of team or of the national team of the Isle of Man. Um, yes, yeah, we've done the Europe Cup. Um, in Romania last year, yeah. So exactly that, exactly that. Yeah. So there, there are no uh, like disagreements about hey, why are you representing Wales, but you're also in the in the national team no, of the Isle of Man. Nobody's comment. Uh, t- to be fair, no. I say like um, Jim Williams made a joke um, when we played Wales. Um, when we played Wales in Romania, Jim Williams made a joke saying. I think it was four men per team. I think, if I remember rightly, mm-hmm. and Jim Williams said, "Well, it's five. It's five Welshmen playing in this game." Yeah. <laughs> so. um, yeah. Let's go to uh, the online darts. You are also in Team uh, Isle of Man on the WDF Virtual Cup. Yeah. Wh- what do you think of that tournament? Was it was it a good decision of the WDF to uh, organize such a tournament? Oh, definitely, definitely. Especially in this pandemic that we're in, um, it's it. it to keep your darts sharp and to keep your darts going, online darts is is getting massive at the moment. Um, I've been playing WDA uh, webcam darts for the past five, six years, maybe. Um, okay. So I'm quite used to playing online, if that makes sense. Yeah. Do you feel like that experience is uh, well, well, yeah, helping you to win games? I can I can assume it. it the experience of using the webcam and playing all by yourself is definitely helping to perform better. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I've had a couple of practice sessions with uh, Daniel Larson, uh, like best of 31s. Um, I've had a couple of practice sessions with Kurt Parry back in Wales. 
uh, which is he's been on the ch- uh, challenge to himself. Um, I've just uh, just been playing um, a guy called Jason Heaver. He's from uh, Newbury area, UK. Um, is my games by playing them type of players, your game will only go in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And them th- them best of thirty ones, I I feel it has made me a bit more consistent, if that makes sense. Sustaining that ninety plus averages over over thirty over thirty one legs, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can I can definitely uh, uh, see that. Um, you're also doing those uh, well averages on the WDF Virtual Cup. You um, got through the group stage. You won. Um, uh, the last 32 of uh, the Frenchman Jacques Labre. And now uh, the Dutchman Richard Vreenstra is uh, there at the moment of recording. Um, what are your thoughts uh, going on in that game? I think Richard Vries has been around a long, long time, hasn't he? I know what he's capable of doing. So I've just got to be ready and, and be sharp, if that makes sense. This is such a short format. You can't afford to be slipping off. You can't afford to be dropping legs early on. You've got to be out to the blocks quick and you've got to be sharp if that makes sense mm-hmm. I know what I'm capable of doing I know my A game is there I could beat anybody on my, on my A game but yeah against the likes of Richard you, you've got to be from the off you've got to be on the ball yeah exactly let's hope uh, you've won that game at the, at the moment this, uh, this podcast is uh, going to be uh, online in the group stage you played against players from the Czech Republic Iceland Croatia and uh, Catalonia um, yeah how is it to play against such international players? It's nice, you know, it's nice to get to know these people type of thing. Um, it is a little bit hard with communication sometimes because obviously their English is not very good and I don't speak any other language. Mm-hmm. So it's like the communication can be a little bit difficult, but we work out between ourselves and we do get there. And it's, it's so nice to meet all these different types of players. Um, yeah, they're so... We're all there for one thing, a game of darts, you know what I mean? And we're all trying our best in this pandemic. And it's a lot of people, all the people I've met so far have been absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant they have. Yeah, I, I think the online darts is uh, uniting people from, from all over the world and that's that's only, only a good thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you feel proud about representing the Isle of Man? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's nice to put the shirt on and represent the Isle of Man. As I said, it's been, you know, coming up to five years. Um, and it's an honour. It's an honour to represent the other man. Um, I can't see me going back to the UK, so this is my home now for, for good, hopefully. Um, and, yeah, absolutely an honour to put the shirt on and oh. represent the other man. Let's hope you can uh, represent the team for uh, quite a while. Um, let, let's talk about the darts on the island uh, in general. Um, one of the main or the biggest tournaments or weekend of tournaments is the Isle of Man Festival with uh, with uh, three tournaments. Um, you played in the last WDF tournament um, before COVID. Um, how was it to play in that, that last big darts event? Um, it's, a, it's a little strange. Everybody was on edge, really, with, with this COVID pandemic. Do you know what I mean? Everybody was a bit tense, I suppose. But um, the Isle of Man Darts Festival, is that, is, it's got to be one of the best festivals that I've been to, um, you go regardless of the big comps, you got so many little comps around on the outside. So people who get knocked out earlier go in straight to the different like venue. But um, as the Villa Marina, the Isle of Man Darts, where it's held, um, it's so it's so well organised. It's so loads of space. Nobody's cramped. Like I've been to some like the Welsh Open is really. If you're on the middle boards in the Welsh Open, you you struggle because everybody's pushing against each other. Mm-hmm. But the Isle of Man, you've got so much room, you've got so much. Yeah, it's everybody's friendly. Um, yeah, I, I think it's one of the best best tournaments going. I think. Is it a tournament of the locals too? Do you notice people from the Isle of Man that maybe norm usually don't really play darts, but then they see the big tournament and they think, oh. I'm a, I have to join a local competition too to be as well, best as you guys. That's quite funny. That that's quite funny because you only get the same people again turning up to the big tournaments. Um, there's some absolute quality players that don't even bother going to the Alaman Open. 
and it's so frustrating because their talent is 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 frustrating because some of them are absolutely quality. So but on the island, don't... on the island itself, they still do. You, do you know the reason why why they don't attend the the tournament? Or I don't know. It's they stuck. They they get stuck in their ways. I suppose um, they like. I know it sounds stupid, but it's only like twenty. 20 uh, was it? 10, 15 mile or whatever it is from north to to Douglas or from south to Douglas and some of them don't even turn up to the big big events and it sounds stupid but they really don't like to travel mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm guessing that that is the reason but I've seen me in the UK driving three hours just for like a Super League game or anything <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, do you still think the tournament is important for the, the development in darts uh, on the Isle of Man? Yes, because without that we wouldn't have anything, I suppose. Um, so frustrating to, to to see that it's not enough. It's not more people playing, but yeah, if without that we wouldn't have anything. Yeah, you've seen how uh, darts is organised in Wales um, and and in the on the Isle of Man. There are probably some differences you you notice how it's organised in the the mainland of the UK and on the Isle Isle of Man. Um, are there things you would like to change to? make the, the darts better on, on the island? Um, it's so difficult because the population is so small, if that makes sense. So to change anything, I would like a Super League on the Isle of Man. Yeah. I, I, just, just to get like South playing North or West playing East, I would like that type of system in place. But they stuck in the they stuck in their in ways and people don't like change. People do not like change. And it's, it's from an outside point of view, it's, it's really, really frustrating type of thing. Yeah, I hope uh, that's going to be uh, okay in, in the future of uh, the Isle of Man. Um, let's talk about that future. Um, you've already said it a little at the start of uh, um, this podcast, but are there any... Um, or how is the future of darts on the Isle of Man? And are there any future new talented talented players over there? No, you don't see you don't see enough youngsters coming up and playing. Um, you don't even in the local pub leagues. There's not enough youngsters joining. Is and when you do join, they'll pull out after the season. Um, I would like to see more. I'd like to see a youth, like a JDC, to be honest with you. Yeah, so there's uh, there's no uh, youth competition or youth leagues over there on the, on the island. No, we um, the youth, the youth, whatever. Like, there's a guy called Callum Brew. I think he was the only youth player that used to play, and he used to go across and represent the Isle of Man um, in the Windmill Masters and. Um, and I think it was the World Championship qualifier, I think, anyway. Um, but it's not enough. It's just definitely not enough youth coming through. In in the local pubs, it's not, they're just not interested. Like, what, what do you have to do to make the youth uh, interested in darts on the island? I th like I said, I think it's a JDC that would work. I think that would only generate uh, younger players coming up from a young, young age, if that makes sense. Like um, s school, s uh, school activities and type of thing, where you have like a a session at night, evening with young kids coming up. I think, and hopefully they'll enjoy it and they'll progress if that makes sense. And if they realise they've got a talent, they will they will progress. I think it's gonna have to be st established from a young young age type of thing. I think personally, I think anyway. Mm, well, I think I I totally agree. With uh, with you, let's hope uh, um, maybe the JDC. I mean, they're they're expanding all over the world, so why not the Isle of Man? Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, I think um, at least the national team of the Isle of Man uh, has uh, still some time to enjoy you, uh, Kevin uh, Lane. Um, so uh, yeah, I want to wish you good luck, good luck, and um, on the, on your further career. And um, yeah, thanks for uh, joining the podcast. No, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.